We're now going to turn to an algorithm for maximum weight uh, matching. And in particular, we're going to start by looking at maximum weight perfect matching. Um, we're going to use the primal dual framework. We could have, now that we have our polyhedral characterization, uh, instead try to use ellipsoid algorithm as long as we could find, uh, in which case our task would be to find a polynomial time separation algorithm, but that's not the avenue that we're going to pursue at this point. So let's uh, write down the primal and the dual problem for maximum weight perfect matching. We have a weight vector, which I'm assuming is non-negative, um, max sum of we xe subject to the perfect matching constraints. Now we've written down two different uh, versions of the perfect matching polytope. I'm going to use one of these. We could have also used the other and try to derive a primal dual algorithm based on, based on, on that. Um, we need, of course, non-negativity. We need, for every vertex, at least one, uh, exactly one edge to be selected. If I, chose, if I turn this into less than or equal to 1, then I would have the matching polytope. And x of delta of u is greater than or equal to 1. Again, for every u of cardinality bigger than 3 and odd. Um, let's write down the dual uh, to this. Um, and let me just write it as a side note here that I'm going to assume that uh, throughout that the graph we're considering indeed has at least one perfect matching. Otherwise, because I've put equality here for, 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 this, uh, for this constraint, uh, that, would, um, that requires the, the existence of, of at least one perfect, perfect matching, and it wouldn't be an interesting problem if we didn't have it. So, so I'm going to assume that there exists a perfect matching. And among all the perfect matchings, uh, we're trying to find the one of maximum, of maximum weight. What does the dual look like? Now, in the previous lecture, I separated out dual variables for single node constraints and for uh, constraints uh, that have cardinality bigger than three. I'm not going to do that uh, in this lecture. So I'm going to have my dual variables will be uh, my will be y u, and now u is any odd size subset possibly of cardinality one, or including cardinality those of cardinality one, but everything odd. So I'm perhaps going to skip always. I may forget to write down that that u has odd, odd cardinality, uh, and oh, the constraints tell us that the sum over all u such that e is in delta of u. That's all the edges entering into uh, into into u, well, into or out of. There's no no directionality here. Y u is less than or equal to w e. And note here that y u uh, is non-negative, but only we only require non-negativity for uh, those subsets that have cardinality greater than or equal to three. So I'll make sure to, to write this here for all u where u is bigger than or equal to three and of course odd. And again, this comes from the fact that um, I have equality here when u is an odd subset of size one, in other words, in other words, just a vertex. Um, so, uh, now, one thing that it's important to note is that we can't run um, simplex algorithm here. Um, we can't run, uh, so the, the, the primal has exponentially many constraints, which of course means that the dual has exponentially many variables. So it's we can't, in a generic or naive way, uh, run the primal or restricted primal or dual or restricted dual, um, etc. So we, we can't uh, we can't do that. So we have to limit 
the variables in, uh, in the dual, if we're hoping to uh, use any kind of technique where, like primal dual where we have a dual solution and we're constantly trying to update and improve it. And we have already seen in the previous lecture the key idea to this. Uh, though we're not going to appeal directly to the TDI lecture that we just saw in the Cunningham Marsh formula, um, that gives us the critical idea. We are only going to maintain, we're only even going to consider variables that uh, are in a laminar family. So let me write that out explicitly here. The idea is that we're going to build a dual solution with only a few non-zero entries. And again, we, we, we've already seen this uh, several times. In fact, we also saw it the first time we talked about laminarity when we, in the lecture on, on our arborescences. Um, so, uh, namely, the algorithm is going to maintain a laminar family. Again, we've introduced laminar family a number of times, so I won't define it. Well, it's easy to define, uh, but I'll just draw you uh, a picture. Laminar family, again, just means that um, any two subsets are either nested or they have uh, no intersection. So we're going to maintain a laminar family omega and uh, and only consider dual variables indexed by some of the subset by the subsets u in omega, and by laminarity you should check or do this as an exercise that the cardinality of omega and ask how many. Uh, how many subsets um, can there be? This is uh, on the order of V. It can be more than V because every single subset could be uh, an omega, but, uh, but I can't have, certainly cannot have an exponential number of subsets also be laminar, even though clearly there are exponentially many um, subsets. They just don't form a laminar family. Okay, so now let's look at the dual variables and see how far we can get using ideas of complementary slackness. So as I mentioned on the previous slide, we're going to maintain a laminar family omega. And I'm only going to consider uh, only the yus uh, where u is an element of omega. So if y, uh, if, if u is an element of omega, that means I'm going to consider yu, and it is allowed to be, uh, so yu is allowed to be positive. But it can be zero. So in other words, I'm not, I'm, I'm now going a little bit backwards from the TDI lecture that we, that we saw previously. I'm not taking a dual solution and extracting a laminar family. I'm going to be maintaining a laminar family and only allowing uh, Ys in that laminar family to possibly take non-zero um, non values. So this is, this is, uh, this is the idea. Um, so our algorithm will update Y and it will also update uh, the laminar family um, omega. So let's see what does complementary slackness tell us. Um, because this is how the primal dual algorithm works. For any dual variable, for any dual solution, uh, possibly non-optimal, why? I want to find um, a primal solution that satisfies complementary slackness. This is the, this is the whole idea. So what are the constraints that we have? Let's look back at, uh, at the constraints of our LP. And really, this is it. You know, these, are, these are our constraints. We have a constraint for every single edge. This is extremely convenient for us, and it, and it builds in the idea of how we're going to combinatorialize this algorithm. Because 
the primal, what we want to get rid of or combinatorialize is this objective function. And that's exactly what primal dual does. We are going to consider only feasibility in the primal problem where we've added the requirement of satisfying complementary slackness. And complementary slackness is going to have a very nice combinatorial interpretation for us because I have a constraint for every single edge. And so simply put, complementary slackness is going to mean that our primal solution is just only allowed to use some set of edges. In other words, uh, we have our constraints, um, sum of u for every e in u, y u is less than or equal to w e. W -E. So I'm going to let, uh, for y, a dual feasible Uh, solution, I'll just say for y dual feasible, I'm going to define the set EY to be all of the edges that the restricted primal is going to be allowed to use. So it's just going to be E such that the constraint I wrote here is satisfied with equality. In other words, WE minus the sum of YU over all U with E in U, this is equal to zero. Okay, so the restricted primal can only use these edges. So let's uh, recall the philosophy behind the primal dual method and see a little bit more carefully why this is going to be useful for us. And why is it that when I saw the restricted primal only using these edges, um, what, what, what is it that I expect? How is that going to, uh, going to help me? So let's recall this the primal dual framework. So again, we start with y dual feasible. And the key point is that if we can find x that is primal feasible and satisfies complementary slackness, note that in order to do this, you do not need to even think about the objective, uh, then we're done. Namely, x is an optimal solution. And the whole magic or the whole, uh, the whole framework of primal dual is what happens if we fail? In other words, if we fail to find an x that's, that's primal feasible. So if not, we use our failure to improve, to improve uh, the dual solution y. And so what happens for uh, our problem for max weight matching? Our restricted primal, restricted rp, is again pretty simple. It basically uh, just searches for something that satisfies all the constraints. Again, looking at these constraints, if we're only if we're worried about these, these exactly characterize a uh, perfect matching. So, in other words, we're just looking for any perfect matching now. We've combinatorialized the objective. We're not looking for a perfect matching that has maximum weight. Uh, so restricted primal searches for any perfect matching using only the edges that are allowed, only in edges in the set e y that we that we defined on the previous um, on the previous slide. And let's just note uh, for this example. Of course, we all believe it because we've seen in this in this in this class. Uh, this strong duality, uh, but but let's just see directly that um, if we find such a perfect matching, it must be max weight, and you know, just just to just to see it directly, the weight of the matching. Oops. The weight of our of the matching is uh, by definition 
equal to the sum of all the edges in the matching. And then just by the inequalities, this is greater than or equal to sum of the edges in the matching times the sum of u with e in u of yu. This, is, this inequality is weak duality. It's true for any uh, dual feasible solution y, just by virtue of the constraints that it has to satisfy. And now I can switch the order of summation here, and this is equal to the sum over u. Again, just to belabor the point, um, when I write sum over u, I mean sum over u that have uh, the sets u that have odd cardinality. Y u times the cardinality of m and delta of u. How did, again, I'm using the fact that there is, uh, I'm talking about a specific matching. I'm not talking about an arbitrary primal feasible point. Right? I'm saying, uh, I'm, 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 I'm always looking for x that's a, that's a matching, to be unclear. So if we can find an x that is uh, primal feasible, let's say, that's a matching. Um, in other words, I'm looking at, at extreme points of that, of that primal polytope. Um, so that, that's, how, that's, where, that's where this equality and where m comes from. And uh, this is greater than or equal to the sum of yu, where this is my dual objective. So this is weak duality. So let's uh, see why we have equality. Complementary slackness makes this into an equality. And this is an equality because M is a perfect matching. Mm -hmm. So I guess I could have, because we, we're only considering perfect matchings, I should have just written equality there. And the main issue is, uh, is, is this inequality here. And complementary slackness is what gets us equality. So the moment we find a perfect matching that satisfies complementary slackness, um, we're done. So the, uh, the algorithm will search for a perfect matching using our Blossom algorithm, or ideas from the Blossom algorithm of Edmonds that, that we saw several lectures ago. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to keep track of the Blossoms. And what else does our, the algorithm produce? It produces Blossoms. It produces M alternating trees. And using these together, we're going to update omega and y and improve the dual. And that is the story that we are going to tell in, uh, in the next lecture. And we're going to pick that up then.